the first thing that has to be recognized is that this is an interim budget and there will be a new government and a new Lok Sabha in less than two months into the financial year to which the budget relates. And therefore, that government and that Lok Sabha will take the final call on the uh, what is to happen for the coming year. So, in that sense, an interim budget would not be an occasion in which you would have announcements about things which uh, are about the future so much. So, uh, to that extent, announcements being made with regard to what will follow do not have too much of a significance really. Okay. And one would say that some of the uh, promises being made about the future are promises that cannot really be made by this government and are being made only because perhaps the actual record of the last five years isn't that promising when people look at it. What is important to also see is that uh, the budget that was presented today, every budget has projections about the future. It also has revised figures about what has happened in the previous year. So, at the beginning of the year, there is a budget estimate, which is a projection of what is going to happen in the coming year. And at the end of the year, when the budget is presented for the next year, for the previous year, you have a revision based on the trends observed. Now, what also appears to be the case is that the government is concealing the real financial situation it is facing uh, by actually showing revenue figures in the revised estimates which are going to be, turn out to be far higher than what will be the actual revenues. So, if the trends available about revenues are such that they indicate that this year, that is in 2018-19, which squarely falls within the term of this government, the revenues are going to be significantly below what was budgeted last year. But the extent to which therefore, the revised estimate should have adjusted the revenue figures, the government has not done so, particularly as far as income tax and GST revenues are concerned. So, in that sense, it is hiding a situation of uh, grave crisis as from the revenue front, which it is going to leave for the next government to therefore deal with or handle, because uh, what is going to happen as far as the revenue situation next year is concerned. So, it is in some sense reflecting on what have been the measures that this government has taken in the last five years, that all its supposed claims that these measures were going to generate more revenues. For example, demonetization was supposed to unearth black money, more revenues. So, where should you have seen that? You should have seen that in income tax, but income tax revenues last year as well as this year are going to fall short of budget estimates. Uh, same GST was supposed to be the big tax reform, even today the finance minister said the biggest reform, tax reform in India since independence. And uh, what is happening as far as revenues from GST are concerned, even there you see the poor. So, it is concealing this true picture on the revenue front and it has so far managed to keep up its revenue situation somewhat by increasing the revenues from oil excise duties. Now that oil prices are no longer as low as they used to be, it has become difficult to use that particular method and the failure on the tax revenue front, on the tax front is really showing up. And as long as that condition remains and governments remain committed to uh, maintaining a low fiscal deficit, which it is also claiming it is uh, as its great success. As long as that is the case, that if taxes are low, you have shortage of revenues, you want to maintain a low fiscal deficit, it means you do not have the means to spend adequately on what the people need. Some part of the expenditure is basically spent on running the government itself. So, what do you have left then for meeting the uh, requirements of the economy and uh, uh, people? So, uh, in a sense, what this budget is reflecting, 
more than what it promises about the future is the situation that uh, has been brought about in which the ability of the government to make a difference to the lives of the people actually itself has become circumscribed. So as far as the uh, 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 income tax uh, concessions are concerned, uh, what is more important than the concessions is the absence of any significant measure to raise direct taxes. Of course, income tax burden is borne by a whole large number of people who are not at the same income level. Okay. If one is interested in generating more revenues from income taxes, then one has to have more measures which tax those with higher incomes more effectively and uh, at a higher rate. And one has to have measures of taxing corporate profits, which is the other source of direct taxes also uh, to the extent that is required. The effective tax rates for the rich as well as for corporate taxes are very low. And that's the problem that the government is simply refusing to try and address. Okay. So we need more revenues, but we also need more revenues from direct taxes. Our tax structure is heavily skewed in favor of indirect taxes. And indirect taxes are taxes that everyone pays. It is regressive in nature. So a fair tax system should also be one heavily reliant on direct taxes. In India, two-thirds of the taxes come from indirect taxes. So there is no real genuine effort at increasing direct taxes. So the only direct tax measure announced was a concession. Okay. So even if there are people who deserve to get some benefit in a particular income bracket, there is no case for much higher income groups to get any benefit of tax concessions. So there should have been more measures of that kind taken earlier. It was not taken earlier. Nor is there any indication that if this government is to return, it will do anything like that. Uh, on the agrarian situation, uh, the fact that the government is today announcing at the end of its five years uh, income support scheme is itself tells a story. Okay. Uh, and the amount of relief that is being offered is also telling a story. So if you are making the argument that an amount of 6,000 rupees a month, a year, uh, 6,000 rupees a year of income support to a rural uh, farming household, uh, which say has four members, so that's four rupees per person per day. If you think that that's a fairly significant support measure, then you have to accept that their incomes are very low. Most of us wouldn't consider 4 rupees a day extra as particularly significant change to our economic status. So you must accept that it is pretty low already, then this is a would appear to be a significant measure. But if it is already very low, then that means there is severe agrarian distress. And you who has a government have to be answerable after five years as to why there is such a great distress. So really what has happened is that instead of spending what should have been spent on various measures to support the agricultural sector, to generate higher incomes from that for those engaged in farming, uh, instead of doing that, what it is doing is that it is so what it is giving in a sense is one small amount which has in some sense been taken away. A much larger amount has been taken away by another hand what this hand is giving. Okay. So that is essentially what this measure amounts to uh, and uh, the, therefore it, it has no promise in terms of uh, resolving the problem of agrarian distress that we see. Substantive measures to address that distress have not been taken in the five years and there is no indication about what those measures might be in the future. The, uh, as far as the job situation is concerned, of course, the, the, uh, the reality is that we are being told that lots of jobs have been, got, have been created. 
but what is the basis for that claim? The basis for that claim it doesn't exist because there is no data to substantiate that proposition. And the claim is that the data that is available is not correct because it is not substantiating this claim. So, if I do not have the correct employment data, how do I know? How do I know that jobs have been created? So, if simply the data is absent, you can make any claim. It does not mean anything. The actual data that is available, all reports are, are indicating that the job situation is extremely bleak. From different sources, you get the same kind of data. And uh, despite that, uh, the, the government is basically refusing to release the data. Frankly speaking, if you release the data, let the data be looked at closely, examined. And based on what is there in the data, if you want to make a claim that this data or this estimate has these, these, these specific problems, and therefore this should not be taken as the correct figure, then that is a proposition that can be debated and argued about. But what you do is you suppress the data itself. So, just as the revenue figures are being projected to be different from what is the actual, similarly you are getting the same story as far as employment is concerned. And because the government has been committed to essentially keeping expenditure low and not taxing the rich and the corporate sector heavily, it has done very little in terms of actually doing anything for creating jobs. Minimum wages will go up over time because of inflation and other such things. So, there will be always some adjustments in minimum wages and there is not one minimum wage in this country, there are several minimum wages in this country. And you still do not know, I mean that is only what is the prescribed minimum wage, it is not necessarily the actual wage because there is a question of enforcement uh, which uh, there is a different story. What is the average level of the wage? Uh, in this country that most people get. And if by the government's own admission, your annual income at 8 lakhs, being below 8 lakhs puts you in the category of being economically backward, relative to that, what is the minimum wage in this country? What is the wage that most people make? See. The scheme itself is supposed to be demand driven. So, the expenditure allocations are not really something for a government to choose. Because if people need work, you are supposed to give them and it has to adjust according to that. Okay. So, uh, uh, the, uh, but what has been happening is that while allocations are uh, first made, they are not necessarily spent. And down the line, you get a situation where the flow of payments gets stuck so that people do not really necessarily get the payments when they are due. In this way, the scheme has been kind of in a sense been uh, undermined continuously. So, therefore, allocations of that kind do not really mean anything. And in any case, if you look at the allocations that have been made, relative to the allocations when the scheme first began. Over the period of time, the requirement should have increased. Uh, if there is agrarian distress, then there is reason work in the agricultural sector. People have to find other means. The allocation should have increased significantly greater. Compared to that, the actual allocations are way short of the mark. So, if you have minimum wages being increased, if you have larger number of people having to be dressed, so therefore in the normal course that allocation should have had to increase. So, compared to the actual requirements of increase, what is the, if you look at the actual increases, they are far short of the requirements. Yeah, well the budget does not necessarily, budget is not an exercise to address everything in the economy. But the budget plays a very, I mean the budget is supposed to reflect government's measures to generate revenues and to spend. Okay, and how 
where it is going to get its money from, where it is going to allocate, uh, to what ends is the purpose. So it's one, it reflects the way in which the government has, one way in which the government has to affect the economic conditions. Okay. And through the effect on the general economic conditions, on the macroeconomic conditions, you affect several other things. So uh, if economic activity of particular kinds increases, uh, certain activities generate more returns, those who have borrowed for such activities would be in a position to repay, it can affect NPS in that way. Okay. But directly, of course, from budgetary measures, uh, what would is it? It is not, 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 not much that would be done to address a problem of NPS. But yes, uh, 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 the only part which could in some sense be affected is if you provide uh, assistance to write off the debts of some people like farmers, etc. There haven't been significant measures of that kind. Uh, and uh, but the government in other ways have facilitated writing of very large loans to large corporate houses. Uh, but when it comes to say assisting uh, farmers, a very different attitude about what the country can bear and the financial health of banks and all these questions come up at that time. The mudra scheme is also uh, a kind of uh, an example of the way the, the government has tended to approach what uh, the different economic problems that are there. That is you do not have you the minimum the minimum the government would do to affect the general conditions of people in this country is to use the power it has to tax and the ability it has to spend in an effective way to expand economic opportunities for large number of people in this country, whether they are farmers, whether they are workers, whether they are in the formal sector, informal sector, who desperately need desperately need livelihood uh, in order to sustain their lives. Okay. So that is the minimum you could do and you could in the process also affect some degree of redistribution of incomes from those who tend to appropriate a disproportionately large share to those who get relatively little. This is not a matter of giving anyone a dole. After all the economic activity which generates the high incomes of some is not an economic activity that is done only by in which the only they participate. Okay. There are others who participate. So, if a, if, a, if a corporation makes large profits, it has workers, employees who work to make that possible. If they get very little, then that is not a question of that they do not deserve it or anything. No, it is the way the economic situation works out that they get very little and some people get a lot. So, there is every rationale for the government using its power to tax and spend to affect some degree of redistribution. The economic realities of India today are such where the poverty of large sections of the people, their inability to find work, to find livelihood which would generate reasonable incomes for them, which would allow them to improve their standards of living are not getting created and in them not getting created, their own inability to spend is becoming a factor. That because there is not enough demand in the economy, you do not have the e expansion of economic activities which would create the employment. So, if people are not being able to find the means to spend because they are not finding employment, then you have to find some way of creating that employment and the way to do that is to spend. Okay. When you spend, you firstly itself create some demand and that in turn leads to some employment creation, that employment creation leads to further demand and so on and so forth. So, that is the process that would be necessary, but if your approach is that I am not going to spend, then you are not able to do these minimalist measures. Now, the problem of the Indian economy is that governments are stuck with trying to 
keep the fiscal deficit low, keep the taxes low, rather than addressing the real economic problems of the people. And therefore, they are left with only this option that if you are not going to spend so much, okay, then you pick out something here, something there to make big announcements as if you are doing a lot. When you add all, of the, all that up, it does not amount to very much. Okay. Fact of the matter is, the government in India spends too little. The fact of the matter is, the tax to GDP ratio in India is way too low. Tax GDP ratio has to be much higher than what it is. The expenditure has to be much higher than what it is. Neither of these is happening, nor is there any movement towards higher tax to GDP ratio, higher expenditure. All the data is there to substantiate this proposition. So, only claims are made that we are doing this and doing that, but the reality is too little is being spent and too little is being mobilized and nothing is being done about changing that. If you look at all the things that has happened in relation to cows uh, or you look at the demonetization exercise of the government, actually uh, in you could say that when you are not able to genuinely offer people the ch chances of an improvement in life, improve their economic prospects, give them jobs. When you can't do that, you try and mobilize people's support through other means. Okay. And sometimes these other means can have even more adverse effects on people's economic lives. Demonetization was a classic example, even all this thing about uh, cows and all is also reflecting the same thing. So, these are, this is a politics which is directly disrupting economic activity in a situation where economic activity in any case is not of an order which would allow significant sections of the Indian population to find reasonable and secure means of livelihood. What one can say definitively is that any claims to have made a significant difference to the conditions of the people or to their prospects in a positive manner, then such claims would have no real basis. In large majority of Indians today face more uncertain prospects about their economic future than they did a few years ago. And that is the unfortunately the direction in which the economic situation is heading.